Hey guys, this is it. This is the end of 2023. So as always, let us do a best movies of 2023 list. As you guys know, I don't get to see as many films as others do, so I don't usually do a top 10. I do a seven because that's the silly rating system I have based myself on for this amount of time, but I do do some honorable mentions. There are some on this list that I have not yet done a review for. Some will come out later in the new year, but there are a few that are just going to be kind of surprises because I have been cramming some in at the very end here. Next year, I do hope that I can do a little bit better because I feel that this year was definitely a return for cinema-based movies after the years of 2020 and 2021 and kind of the resurgence of 2022 2023 really did have more offerings in the theater than on streaming services and i was very happy to see that that was something i was worried about obviously there were some ups and downs with different companies especially disney and warner brothers and uh, just disney <laughs> thankfully there were a lot of good movies both high in budget low in budget so without further ado let's get to the honorable mentions we're going to start off actually with an interesting one, Dormouse. This is a fully Canadian independent movie that I saw back in January. It's a cool little neo-noir film that has some very heavy influences from Brick, a really stellar mystery film. Next on the list is Dungeons and Dragons Among Thieves. Way better than it had any right to be. I feel that it should just be mentioned that there was a good one this year. I'm not even a big D&D person, but this film did get me into D&D amongst other things. I think it just should just be mentioned that there was a good one in comparison to the Jeremy Irons one. <laughs> Next is Mission Impossible 7 Dead Reckoning. This was definitely a great return into the spy action genre. Real intense scenes, real intense action. I'm excited to see part two if part two hopefully happens. I, I do hope so. And the final honorable mention is one I just finished watching, Blackberry. Very much so a Canadian film. It's a cool little window into the past of what was once the most powerful and the most well-recognized cell phone in the industry and how quickly it was destroyed not only apple but inter dealings and just inner conflict with oneself i love how the movie starts and i love how it ends so those are my honorable mentions so now let's start with number seven and it's a tie for a marvel movie across the spider-verse and guardians of the galaxy 3 i liked both of these movies for two different reasons across the spider-verse fantastic animation fantastic continuation of the miles story and a really cool setup for a part two which i hope comes someday but without the absolute barbaric slavery of the animators. But it was very much part one. Excited to see what part two. Whereas Guardians Volume 3 was a fantastic end to a trilogy. One that I thought we might not get. I was very happy to see James Gunn get to do his finale to his trilogy. It's the last thing that Marvel's going to make that I actually care about. That is Central Marvel. I think this is the best one of the trilogy that he made. And it was just a great send off for these characters. Moving on to number six, Godzilla Minus One. Very, very taken with this film. Not only for the visuals and the Godzilla element, but also for the characters. Everyone's talked about it. They made you care about the humans because the characters were well written. You got connected to them, their strife, their struggles and their want to rebuild in the face of calamity that had come and was currently facing them. Honestly, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely see it. Number five, John Wick Chapter 4. Not since the first movie have I enjoyed a John Wick movie this much. Chapter 4 is definitely the second best movie in the entire saga. It has a fantastic conclusion for John Wick. It has, it has the most astounding stunts for a film series that is entirely based on shooting people in the head and doing roles. They somehow were able to always make it fresh, always make it cool, always make it entertaining, and always making you go, oh shit, thank you to everyone involved in this series. Keanu, Chad Stillick, if I got that correct, thank you guys for making stunts matter again. The whole action movie industry owes you a bow. Number four, ADHD brain went off and I accidentally skipped this number. Killers of a Flower Moon was what I had expected from Scorsese when he did The Irishman. It's a three and a half hour long film about the devastation of a community about, based on greed, the infiltration and the conniving aspects of this criminal empire and how they usurped the people from not only the glory of their own land but the wealth of it. Leonardo, De Niro, and Lily all do fantastic performances. Lily is probably the standout for me in this film. I very, very much enjoyed it. It's exactly what I wanted from The Irishman and then some, and it's one of the best Scorsese movies that he's made in years. Number three, The Holdovers. I finished this the other day. Wonderful 
return to those wholesome movies that we used to get back in the 80s and the 70s. Not only is the commitment to the aesthetic, both the setting, visual, and audio, the writing is fantastic. It's a great movie about characters in a point in time and helping them realize something about themselves. And it's really funny too. Really stellar film all around. Number two, talk to me. I had heard so many people tell me so many good things about this movie, including my brother. This film was somehow in theaters for nearly two months, just continually nine o'clock showings because it was fucking good. Can't believe it's the Raka Raka guys, YouTube crazy filmmakers making one of the best horror movies I've seen in a long time. The taking a simplistic idea and fine tuning it to making you go on your edge and kind of veering between whether to laugh, whether to be scared, whether to cry. Talk to me had me on the edge of my seat from beginning to end. I've got to commend it for that. And that's why it's number two. Number one. Now, admittedly, I kind of went back and forth between the top three quite a bit because we have gone from a wholesome movie to a horror movie. And now we're going to a biopic Oppenheimer. I was very excited to see this movie and I left the theater extremely satisfied. Not only for the 70 millimeter IMAX viewing that I got to see, I know some people didn't get to, and I apologize, I'm very sorry you didn't, you didn't get to. I know there was only like 50 options throughout all of North America, but it was amazing. When the first shot of Puddles made me and a couple of other people in the theaters, that was already just the beginning of a three hour epic about one of the most interesting, if not important people in history, the decisions, the relationships, and the consequences of what was done and the fallout of said choices, said relationships, said consequences. Killian Murphy killed it. If Killian Murphy doesn't get the Oscar for Best Actor, I will be very surprised. If Nolan ever had a chance to win Best Director, this would be that goddamn movie. Not only is this movie gripping your attention for three goddamn hours without a single action scene, it's all just people talking in rooms, but it also was able to bring people back to the IMAX in ways that I've never seen. I remember having to wait several weeks so I could buy tickets for my dad because the options were always so limited because of how many people were coming from all over to see it in the IMAX. It was a great reason for people to come back to the movies. It's an amazing movie based on an incredible book, which I will very much recommend you guys read. This movie covers quite a bit of that book. I was actually quite impressed, but there's still even more for the you to see, so I would definitely recommend that. Oppenheimer just kept in the back of my mind the whole year. Whether it was from Killian Murphy's performance, whether it was Robert Downey Jr. stealing the scenes he was in, whether it was from the cinematography blowing my mind with the IMAX quality, whether it was how I was holding my breath when the bomb test went off, whether it was Ludwig's score, which was so good for this movie, the feeling at the end of the film. Overall, just a technically phenomenal movie from beginning to end. And I very, very much recommend well, you guys watching it if you haven't seen it. Anyways, guys, those are the best movies of the year for me. I know it's not as many as others. Uh, there's a few that I still have to watch. Anatomy of a Fall, The Boy and the Heron, The Beasts, Infinity Pool, How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Like I said, there was a lot that I really wanted to see, and I'm hoping I can see some of them before the year comes to an end. If I get the chance to, you know you'll see a reviews from that. But in the meantime, thank you guys for watching my videos this year. Thank you for listening to me talk about these movies. We had a little bit of a subscriber intake this year. We're almost at 5K. I'm, it's better than where I was last year. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for listening to me blabber on. And just thank you guys for joining in on the conversation. I've always enjoyed talking about movies on this channel. Considering I've been doing this for nine years, it never has lost its feeling. But I really have enjoyed the conversations I've got to have with some of you guys over the last year. It's really made me appreciative of it. And especially for those of you who stuck around when I wasn't doing much in the summer, I am very grateful for it. But of course, there is also going to be the worst list. That video will be coming very, very soon. So I hope you guys get to enjoy that as well. In the meantime, happy new year, you guys. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for listening to me talk. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like. If you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, I'm very excited to see what 2024 has to offer. 
Dune Part 2. Would have been on this list if it came out this year, but at least I get it in March. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. See y'all next time.